Okay, so here we're going to talk about division. We're going to introduce the concept with some simple examples to make sense of what it means to divide. And we're going to introduce some common terms that are used when we're talking about division because I think it's important to have uh, the right language to describe what we're seeing. So let's start with a simple example. How about um, four? Well, no, how about eight divided by four? What does that mean? Well, let's say we have eight things. I don't know, eight cookies or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this and and move it over to seem to use it again over here. Um, well, what does it mean to say you have eight things and you divide it four ways? Well, it literally means take the eight things you have and split them up into four groups. That is one way of looking at it. So you can circle these. One, two groups, so one group, two groups, three groups, and four groups. So when we're dividing these eight things into four groups, that's what we're seeing right here, we could, the answer would say, well, how much is in each of those groups. And division assumes that every group will get the same amount. That's critical. So in each of these groups, there are two cookies. So you could say that the answer is two. And uh, when we talk about these problems, we call this number, and we don't have to call it here, we can call it the answer for now, but also we should know that it's called the quotient. When you're dividing numbers and you get the answer, that answer is called the quotient. And this number is called the divisor. And here, this number is called the dividend. So, I mean, we don't need to use those terms right now, but we need to know that they exist and that they are relevant. Uh, but here we're focusing on the idea of division, so I just wanted to throw those out there. Dividend, divisor, and quotient. So, is there another way to look at this? Well, yeah, you know, depending on the, the problem we're given, there are many ways to interpret it. So, so here, 8 divided by 4 is 2. You could also think of this, this, this problem as saying you have 8 things and you divide them into 2 groups where each group has 4. So you could look at it that way where this division process is, okay, I want to divide the 8 things that I have into groups where each group has 4. How many groups will I have? We have 2 groups. And this, so there's some flexibility here when we're looking at division. And um, in the future problems, you might want to think about how you interpret them, maybe versus how I interpret them, or as how others are interpreting them, and compare just to see that both ways we're looking at it makes sense. So here again, in the first situation, we're saying you have eight things and you're splitting them up into four groups. How much will each group have? Well, here we're taking eight three things and we're dividing them into a group of four. How many groups will we have? Well, we'll have two groups, right? One and two. So there is some f flexibility with division and if we're not aware of that now that might lead to, to some confusion later. Let's look at some more examples. What if I had um, uh, six divided by two? Well that would be three and we can think of that uh, I'm gonna say you have six things here one two three four five six and we cut them into two groups group one and group two so each group has three things in it. And we can keep extending this. Let's try some more. What about 15 divided by 5? Well, now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so forth, right? You can see that I've set three groups of 5 to make 15. So here, when we take 15 things and, and divide them into groups of 5, um, we get three groups. And we can Circle those here, one, two, three. And we can continue this and keep practicing, but I want to show you what, what it might look like when we have um, groups where it's, let's say, six divided by four. Well, here, four, four doesn't divide evenly into six. Or we could say, if we had six things, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we wanted to split them up into four groups, um, we, we couldn't do so evenly. So here what we might say is, oh, 
Well, if we have six things, we can split them up into what? Well, we can split them up into one group of four, and then there'll be two left over. So here we would say that you can make one group of four, which we did, there's our one group. We can't make any other groups of four, so we just have two left over. We would say one, remainder, I'll put R here, re remainder, oh, I'll write remainder. Remainder is referring to what's left over. So here we have one group of four, and there's a remainder of two left over. Let's look at this in another example. What if I have 12 divided by five? Well now, let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 items. Now I wanna make groups of five, right? Or I could say I want to divide them into, into five groups. I think I'm going to say dividing into five groups. So these 12 things, I want to divide them into five groups. How much will be in each group? Well, let's, let's try that right now. How, how large can the groups be? Um, here, well, we have one group of five. Okay, that's, so I can make one group of five. Here I can make another group of five. It's two groups. And what's left over here is our remainder. So here we could say that 12 divided by 5 is to say you have 12 things and you want to divide them into 5 groups. How many groups can you make? Well, you can make 2 with a remainder of 2. And here's that remainder right there. And this is just getting us started on the idea of division. Hope that helped.